took the job at the University of Louisville in 1994. Ain't that something? Mm. He comes to the University of Louisville and he says, I want to talk about on the presidential powers topic. Ain't that something? Uh, uh, hello, college people. College. Yeah. On the presidential powers topic, Eddie Warner Jr. arrived at the University of Louisville and the topic was presidential powers. Huh? Huh? <laughs> and he said, we gonna talk about minority set-asides and black reparations as a reduction in presidential powers. Huh? Can you repeat it? We gonna talk about reparations and minority set-asides as a reduction in presidential powers. Ooh. This was his first trip at the University of Louisville. And Daryl Birch was right there with him. <laughs> The NDT was held at the University of Louisville in 1994. Mm-hmm. You see where I'm going with this? She, Dr. Brinkley said something one day. She said, know your history, youngin'. She said that in her speech in the 2NC when we was whooping up on Dayvon. <laughs> she said, know your history, youngin'. Because one thing they can't deny is the fact 1994, the NDT was at the University of Louisville was the first time that a black man, Dr. Eddie Warner, had taken over and run that program. And his first argument was reduce presidential power by giving minority set-asides and reparations to black people. You debating what topic this year? Uh, presidential power. <laughs> <laughs> I-Z-O-N is on, George. It's on. on. It's on. Funny how history repeats itself. I ain't done yet. Here's somebody that nobody never talk about. Don't nobody never talk about Ann Timmons. Don't nobody ever talk about Ann Timmons. Ann Timmons is at Green Hill, and everybody look at Green Hill as an enemy. Everybody look at Green Hill as like, this is the epitome and the embodiment of a white privileged elite prep school to just be beating up on people and taking all the debate wars. But did you know a black man runs that school? A black man runs that debate program. And is in the Hall of Fame. Aaron Timmons. Not only has he run that program to one of the most successful programs in the country, but he saw a little black debater debating at LD after watching what performative debaters do like Miguel. He said, you know what, I'm bringing that into LD. So he took this little black man by the arm. He said, I'm going to arm you with the, with the argument of race like they do in policy debate. And let's bring it to LD. And people called him a cheater. People called him a liar. People said he was racist. People said you were exclusionary. People said this is not the forum for that. And he took that boy all the way to the TOC. Aaron Timmons. I don't ever want to hear nobody talk about Aaron Timmons as a sellout until they meet the man. Go talk to him first. He at Green Hill. He in Texas. He in Texas. He in Texas. Look him up. Email him. But know your history. He's in Texas. We all know Dr. Shanair. Right? We all know Dr. Shanair Reed Brinkman, who was living her life at Emory, and she felt, hey, everything great. I'm having a great time. I'm debating. I got a scholarship. I'm at a major university. And then something opened her eyes. Something happened. Something talked to her. And I'm not, I'm not even going to go into the story. I'm just going to let her tell it. Something changed her where she came back and she said, let me reflect on my debate career after what I just experienced. And God dang. I don't go to none of the major tournaments. I've never been to the NDT. I've never been on one of the top debate teams. And I think I'm just as good as all the rest of these folks. So she went and spoke to Dr. Melissa Maxi Wade, and she said, that I, we got a problem. 